Hello, I'm Entrilisi Man. Welcome to Aurora Forex, the most ridiculously in-depth, frustratingly amazing space strategy game there is. So, it is uh, election day. It is 2070, which means that a new election has taken place and a new party installed. But quickly before that happens, I have been asked to try and solve the problem of the pod people, as they have become known. The people who live on these uh, orbital weapon platforms that are defending our jump points. Each one has four people who work for a 50-year term length of service. What's it called? Uh, deployment. A 50-year deployment. And it was considered to be maybe a bit inhumane. And so um, there was kind of a general agreement among all the parties and the houses to try and solve this by rotating crew out. Now, this isn't something we actually need to do game mechanics wise. They actually have food and whatever recreational you know, stuff they need for 50 years. But we are going to build something just for RP purposes that we can send to each of the orbital weapon platforms on a regular basis, like a, like a shuttle um, to service stuff to be able to like trade people in and out and be like, right, okay, let's take you off. You've been there a while. Let's put you on and you know, let's send updates and letters and whatever i mean do people still send letters in the future i don't know anyway so we're going to build ourselves very quickly before the election happens a ship that is capable of going through to each of these orbital weapon platforms and defending them now does it need to be jump capable um probably not because currently if we look at the map which i've done a little bit of uh meddling with i've actually started moving stuff around you can see that we've actually shifted the map around quite considerably. Um, but it, it makes more sense this way and it should hopefully not cross over itself as much. But you'll notice that we have uh, Bulgaris and Mr. Grey. Those are both on our jump lanes. So we can go to these and we can do stuff with a shuttle without having to have jump drive. However, our actual carrier did have a jump drive. So our carrier could in theory go dump future weapons platforms like beyond the range of these space lanes. At which point we might need a jump drive to actually get to them. So let's see what we can do. We're going to open up our class design. Uh, wide view. New ship class. And this is the Apollo's game. Right. And we're going to see if we can get you. I'm going to try and get you in a fighter configuration. Because all we need is people storage. Like, you know, space for people. We don't even need a, a cargo hold, like, because I know I was saying, oh, we might bring letters and stuff. That's not enough letters to fill a cargo hold. This is enough that we might just be able to put it in like a bag or somewhere. Like each of these platforms only has four people and our 20, you know, platform units that we deploy are only 80 people. So uh, we're going to go for a, what are we going to call it? Is there like a deep space shuttle or something? Deep space survey ship. No. Um, shuttle, shuttle craft. What's this between a shuttle and a shuttle craft? It's not a space liner. No, we're gonna go with a shuttle, and then crew quarters. So we can add extra crew quarters just by doing this. Um, does it say how many crew it adds? Like this is ten, and it's got a small and a tiny. If we add a crew quarter. Will it not let me add more? It used to be in Visual Basic, you could add like extra crew quarters and stuff. I don't think you can anymore. Okay, let's take it out. What about cryogenic transport? Okay, so if we add an emergency cryo support like pod, that can have 200 people in it, which I think is more than enough. Like I said, we only need 80. An emergency is the smallest I think there is. Yeah. Okay, well, let's make this all about one emergency cryopod. Well, cryopod unit. Capable of having 200 people on board, so, you know, more than capable. We're going to need an engine, we're going to need fuel, and we could probably make this, I'm hoping, in the format of a pretty tiny fighter. Uh, don't need large fuel storage. So let's go engines. Um, again, engine power ramp down. Engine size. I think we'll ramp down to around there. It's going to be a bit more fuel intensive than we're used to. But 
Hmm. We'll have to just work on that at some stage. 150 tons. 14 EP. Now, there is a calculation you can do to figure out how fast something's going to go. Um, and that is using hull size and stuff like that. And honestly, I don't really like hull size because it's why, why don't you just use tons? Why are we talking about this hull size unit? And then we talk about tons elsewhere. So I've converted the formula to say tons because it's easier. The speed equals EP divided by tonnage times 50,000. So we're going to just quickly bring this up. And we're going to go, okay, so our EP is going to be 14.4 divided by 500 times 50,000. Yeah, okay, that's going to go very fast. We do not need that speed. Damn, okay, let's go even slower. And I'm thinking we could honestly go down to like this sort of size. Like a 50 ton engine. This fighter may not actually need to be 500 tons. We could go for a fighter that's far less. That's not a problem. Um, again, the fuel usage. You notice that the fuel consumption is going up. Again, it's still going to probably save fuel overall. But this is going to get uh, much more fuel use per unit of mass than you'd expect. Right. We should probably go down even further. Because, like, okay, bringing back up calc again. This is based on tonnage. So let's do, um, say, let's say we know we want to know the speed. So speed equals EP divided by tonnage times 50,000. So speed times tonnage divided by 50,000 equals the EP we need. Right, so the tonnage. Let's assume this is going to be actually quite, quite tiny. Um, let's assume it's going to be 300 tons. So 300... And then times by, let's say we want it to go 500. And then divided by 50,000. We need an EP of 3. Wow, okay. That EP's too high. Um, You know what, let's accept that. It goes that fast, we'll trade people out slightly quicker. Whatever. It's a 50-ton engine. Um, This is going to be... Uh, Company name. The Wagon Man Engines Limited. They've got a specialty in ultra-tiny engines. Okay. Um, is this all good? Do you want to do it? Uh, yeah, we want to instant add out a Space Master mode on. Okay. Okay, we'll just create that normally. And then I'm going to have to go into the research screen. Yeah, that's a lot faster. Uh, okay, now we need the... We also need the maintenance life and stuff, but obviously like that's quite high right now. Uh, deployment time... Uh, let's say we want it to deploy for, I mean, we could say four years. But then we need to overhaul every four years. And that honestly just gets kind of annoying. Okay, so because it's a fighter, it can't be commercial. And also the engine is actually a military engine. Uh, you can't have commercial engines below a certain size. So it's a military engine. Question is... Do we really care about deployment time? Because deployment time is not going to affect this thing because it's just traveling from point A to point B. Now, deployment time does affect a lot of stuff, but, you know, we could actually probably just go to like, bam, done. But if we up the deployment time to 100 years, notice how that changes things. Now, I will say for RP purposes, people aren't serving 100 years flying the shuttle. It's just that the shuttle is outfitted for 100 years before it needs to be overhauled or whatever. You know, let's... I'm not going to worry about the deployment time thing. Because in this case, it's most evident this is effectively like a Boeing 747. It's just flying one place to another. We change pilots, we change crew, we go again. Like, it, it doesn't matter beyond that. So, we're going to put it down as 100 years, and we're going to give it a little bit more maintenance life, so we ideally don't have to worry about it for quite some time. Um, that's what we do. Let's give it a maintenance storage. Fighter storage is three tons. Maybe a bit more. There we go. 123 years. And then we need to check our distance we can travel. So let's start chucking fuel on this thing. That's pretty good. Okay. We got a 400 ton shuttle. 
that goes, you know, slowish. But again, we don't really mind about that. Um, the maintenance life has gone down, so we might need to consider upping that. But the range is like through the roof. Like we don't need necessarily that range. This shuttle, however, will be able to just provide us with a lot of future expertise and usage. So maybe we don't worry as much as, you know, I'm saying. Um, engineering room. Should we get another engineering room? That does make the maintenance life go up, but it also increases the amount of like space we need because I believe how many crew do we need five yeah we over double the number of crew on board in fact all but one crew right now are in this engineering space because I think this is five crew yeah like this is maybe a little bit maybe we could change this or something uh, let's try a fighter engineering space it does shoot that up nicely it only costs one person and then we use a maintenance storage bay to just give it more maintenance supplies. Ah, we start to get diminishing returns. We will probably need a bigger one than the fighter bay. Uh, let's try a tiny, which is... Two crew. 91. Up to four crew now. Oof. Yeah, the six crew are back. Okay, let's go to a small. There we go. We get the 100 years. We've also shaved about 50 tons off the weight, which I consider kind of a win. The range is good. And in theory, this thing will run out of fuel um, before anything else happens, so... Now, note that although this thing is tiny, it's actually got 100,000 litres of fuel on board. A lot of our ships only have like 500,000, and those are full-on ships. So the drive is making a huge difference in terms of like the, um, what's it called? Efficiency? That's the word. I think this is good. We don't really need anything else. It's got kind of everything we need. We could chuck like a thermal sensor on it or something. Like maybe like a really tiny one. Yeah. I've done thermal sensors. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, We've got everything else. We're going to lock the design. And it comes in at 358 tons. Which I think is pretty reasonable. The speed is obviously a little bit low, but it's designed for like a long flight time going to far away places. Obviously, we don't actually need that right now. But this thing could go for, what's that, like 20 years? It could fly for 20 years before it runs out of fuel. It's pretty well equipped. So with that locked, Apollo's game is our shuttle. Um, it will probably just be called Apollo's game 1, 2, etc. Because although they are considered like military because it's a fighter, it's kind of considered military. Technically, it's considered fighter, which is separate, but it's military. It's the same, it's the same thing. Um, the engine's military, etc. as well. It should be able to be something that we can just use for the future. And every time we put down more weapons platforms, we'll just add it to the list of places it goes. So we'll come over here. We'll go to our industry. Pop down into fighter. Apollo's game will demand one be built. Um, and then I think we'll up queue you. We'll down queue the Naval Sponges. We'll up queue you. There we go. And that'll be done in a month. It'll take us a month to build that. Actually, that's kind of surprising. It shows how slow our production can be. Either way, it's capable of having 200 people on board. Crewed by only five people. Quite reasonable. Right, and so the results of the election. Uh, this election was kind of crazy in that we had a party that looked like it was going to win very early on and then in subsequent rounds got kicked out. And it ended up with a completely new party that actually only got in in like the last couple of hours of submissions for parties. The Lords Commissioners of the Royal Combined Arms Force, or just LC for short. So the LC are kind of like a defensive historical party focused around being able to be mm, kind of like not a xenophobic military, but more like a, 
a respectable military kind of party. Um, if we have a quick look at their election manifesto, at least for the last time, it was pragmatic militarist. We seek to increase our research into military-based technologies and strengthen the home system with static sensor stations to monitor all jump points in and out of Sol. We can see how that given the material situation on Earth, we must also focus on expanding and gathering activities and logistic networks to support such an endeavor. So they say, hey, while we are militarist, we understand that right now we need to focus on the economy. And that was a very concise manifesto. And I personally am putting that down to their win. It was a very concise, to the point manifesto that people liked. Um, they did, though, opt to go into a coalition with the Alliance of Sexy Scientists, who obviously are the party that just went out of power. And so working together, they managed to bring out six motions, policies that we have to follow. Now, um, one of them looks like it might be rejected and another is still not passed but four of them passed very quickly and these are the mining fleet act which says that we need uh a mining fleet with logistical support capable of making a meaningful impact in our resources that goes beyond our initial borders ahead of the colonists to secure the use of the minerals as required by the empire uh, and also and as such also requires defense of some form that part would be disqualified on the basis of uh that's not so the four policies are the mining fleet act which requires us to make a mining fleet with logistical, with logistical support mm. so the four motions policies that we have to follow are the mining fleet act which dictates that we need to create and establish a mining fleet with logistical support that can make a significant, meaningful impact in our resource production. Okay. Well, we were considering going to uh, the Hoyle system, I believe. Uh, where did I put the Hoyle system? Here we go. It's setting up some sort of asteroid mining fleet of some kind. So that actually kind of works. Uh, the second one is the Sol Surveillance Program, which requires that we create and maintain a surveillance fleet uh, to cover the jump points and ideally the rest of Sol. Now, it's not really possible to cover the entire solar system or not without going kind of off the deep end with like sensor boys or something. But I do have an idea of this. What we could do is, since we're already putting all the weapon platforms at each of our jump points, we'll continue to do that. And that means that we will have active sensors on each jump point. So each jump point will be covered, which is the primary part of the bell. And then what we could do after that is start putting down rows of sensor buoys. Buoys? Buoys. Buoys. Rows of sensor buoys that we can basically put down like these active sensor missiles that don't have a secondary component. They just have an active sensor. Then we just dump them. And then if anyone starts crossing them or comes in and they actually manage to get past the actual platforms, hopefully they'll cross one of these sensor buoys and we'll be able to notice where they are in system. Because once someone gets in system, they can actually kind of go... Kind of far away. Provided they don't get, go near your, like, you know, your main shipping lanes or your planet, which obviously has a lot of deep space tracking sensors. Like, they can go kind of, like, over here, over here. They could probably go insofar as, like, over here. And we wouldn't know where they were. So that's quite a good idea. I like that. Uh, the next one is the Advancement of Automation Act, which was part of the coalition was by the Alliance of Sexy Scientists. Uh, it requires us to switch to automated mines to try and solve the worker shortage. Again, that's actually pretty smart. It does use up some of our industry and will eat a lot of corundium. Corundium is used uh, for the production of automated mines. So let's quickly just check how we are doing on corundium. Um, corundium. Not good. Okay. Our projected use is currently double what we have. We're going to need to try and solve Corundium before we can really kick that into high gear. At least Geranium, we've got more that we're still mining. And we've got a load off world that we can take advantage of. The Corundium is going to be an issue. Okay, but we can still do that. And then the Interspecies Peace Act. This motion states that consistent diplomatic contact must be made with the Grosvenor Protectorate, commonly known as the Jazza Aliens, in order to foster future peaceful cooperation and alliance with them. Okay, so we need to make uh, like diplomatic contact and keep that going. That's fine. So, um, the Automation Act. 
instead of making automated mines, we can convert mines to automated. And obviously, then they don't use people. Uh, it does use wealth and it uses corundium. So, like, doing that to, like, 100 of our mines would cost us half of our available corundium almost. It's expensive. But building automated mines is similarly expensive. So what's our actual mine cost? It does cost more to build a mine and then convert it, which understandable. But for now, it is probably better that instead of just making automated mines, which is costing us more corundium, we just convert some of our own. So we're going to take this down to like 5%. And then in line with this new policy, we'll convert mine to automated, and that way it won't need workers. So our worker deficit, which currently sits at 30.87 million, will hopefully go down a bit. How many miners do we actually have on the planet? 43. Like, that's the equivalent of like two-thirds of our miners not doing anything. Ugh, rough. Uh, right oh. So let's convert, say, 100. We did mention that Karenium was going to be an issue, so... And that will take... Oh, wow. That will only take five years. Okay. Right. What is next? The Peace Act. Okay. The Mining Fleet Act. Okay, I think the Mining Fleet might need more tech. Let's have a check. Um, construction Production. Orbital Mining Module. We're going to need that, so... We are working on the research rate right now. And that will take us halfway through this decade. I I kind of feel that we need to get working on the auto mining module sooner. As much as I kind of hate bumping this tech. I think we need to. So we're going to cancel that. Get the orbital mining module out. And then I'm actually going to say, hey Bernardo, when you're done... Just add that to Q. And that way, Bernardo Borealis will, once done with the orbital mining module, start on that one. And that will be done in two years. All right, great. So that's the beginning of that one. Now, Sol Surveillance Program. We need to get one, two, three jump points covered. I'm um, trying to think where our other orbital weapon platforms are. Oh, up here. Yeah, strategist. So far away, I keep forgetting about it. Right. Well. Which is more important right now? Not really Kalika, but we do need to cover the jump point. Mr. Grey and Volgaris are probably the most important. That way, if something does get through the void wall in Volgaris, it hits R1 as well. And we have, and I did check this, we actually have, if we go to New Fighters Earth, 40, which is two groups of 20. So we're actually ready to deploy you. So we will probably want to try and grab 20. I'm going to grab approximately 20. 29. Okay. One, two. Three. You can't drop them in the formation. You have to drop it on the formation, which is kind of annoying. Um, right. Okay. Now I've got these groups of 20. What we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, you, movement order, fleet. Ragland, land on, done. And that'll take that long to do. Literally five seconds. They're very efficient. And then we're going to go to the Ragland and say, hey, Ragland, do me a favor. Go over to the jump point to, I'm going to say Mr. Gray. Yeah. Move to location. Right. That's that. Now, deploying the, uh, like, the warning net kind of idea, 
that's going to be interesting. And that's going to require a whole new missile to be developed. That's going to require us to make a new, effectively like a mine layer ship. It's not going to be a mine layer as such. It's going to kind of act a little bit differently, but it's kind of like a mine layer. Um, and then we also will need a diplomatic ship. Now, I kind of want to start with a diplomatic ship first. Because that's something that's kind of cool and kind of different. So we're going to whip out a new ship class. This is the Compact Kitty. Diplomatic ship. And then we want to go and grab the Diplomacy module. Bam. Now what this does is it basically allows you to communicate and trade ideas and cultural exchange and all that kind of jazz and hopefully increases the relationship with whoever you're in the system talking to. Now we need to get this up to Jazza over here. So that is 13.9. Okay. Uh, we're going to need to stick an engine on etc. All these ion engines, I'm actually going to mark these as obsolete. Because we have better engine tech now. This can all go bye bye. Right. It's commercial. So we don't need to worry about the deployment time, etc. Needs to have a commercial engine. Needs to have a commercial jump drive as well. So let us have a look at our jump drives. Now we're still on efficiency four, which, you know, obviously horrible. It doesn't need to be fast either. Like this di diplomacy ship is just going to go sit there. Like once it gets there, it's fine. It doesn't need to be fast. It just needs a jump drive and an engine. So ultimately, this doesn't need to be a huge ship. Um, in fact, let's have a look at our shipyards to see where's the smallest place we can build this. Um, probably at the 25,000 because it has to be commercial. So it has to be built at commercial yard. Lind Marine is probably the way to go here. Probably set up for building the Ragland, which it never did, which obviously fine. Okay, what jump drives do we have currently? 40k and an 8k commercial. I mean, we could use the 8k, but that seems a ridiculously overkill. Can we just add like more diplomacy modules? No, only one? Okay, so we can't just like spam diplomacy to get more. Let's go with commercial drive and then we'll ramp it down. Self jump only now because it's so small. Um, we could ramp it down to like a 4,000 ton vessel. Let me see. If we go down to 4,000 tons, that would give us, what, like 1,000 tons for an engine, fuel. We could do that. Like, it, again, it doesn't need to be a big engine. This thing just needs to get there. So, okay, we're going to call it an 8K commercial drive, and it is by Leons and Ram Tam Tam. Okay, we're going to instant that. Fresh tack. And then jump drive. Okay. Oh, we can't even get a thousand ton engine in. Wow. Only five crew needed for that? Damn. Okay. Thought there'd be more crew needed for that. Let's see what we can do with a 5k, uh, with a 500 ton engine. I'm not sure this is going to pay off, but we can have a look. So, design tech. Engine. Gonna ramp the power all the way down. And it's currently 500 tons. So we know this is EP48. Now, here's the thing. We can just bring up calc again. We can use that equation. But speed equals EP divided by tonnage times 50,000. Well, overall, the tonnage is probably going to be 4,000 tons. So go. Okay. What is 48 divided by 4,000 times 50,600? That's plenty. Again, this thing's just going to go there and sit on the jump point. More realistic questions. Does it need more fuel? But we'll leave that for another day. Um, in fact, we might want to just drop the speed a little bit. We can get more fuel in. Now, we know it was going 600 at 48. So if we drop it to four, uh, 48, so if we get, drop it to 40, it should go 500. Yeah. We could drop it down to just 400 tons. 
Is that beneficial in terms of the efficiency? Oh, uh, I don't think it's actually beneficial in terms of the efficiency. We lose about 12%. We're just going to go with the 500 ton engine. Yeah, okay. And then uh, company name, Jay and Robsav. We'll instant that in. Fresh tech. Engine, 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 engine. Day and Robsav. Got a little bit of room to play with. The range is... Oh, that, that's off the chart. We don't need that much range. I'm actually going to reduce the fuel size. Fuel storage. Normal. There we go. Now, because we're not entirely dumb, we are going to put some sensors on this thing. Now, sensors don't have to be five tons. They can be... Ooh, why are you a military vessel? Oh, it's the size of the engine. It's considered military because it's too small. What's the minimum size for a commercial engine? Nah, I forgot this. 25, isn't it? Yeah, the engine has to be a minimum of that large. Okay, well, I guess we're going to instant this and we're going to get rid of the other engine. And then we'll get Dan Robsav. Sorry. Sleep tech. Fresh tech. Now the jump drive is too small. All right, we're going to keep the name though. Copy, obviously, component. Okay. How big a jump drive do we need? Probably 5,000 tons. A commercial jump drive. No, it's going to need to be 6,000 tons. Okay. Just that. Fresh the tech. Yeah. Now, we just need to stick a sensor on this thing. And this is a 5 ton sensor. We can go to 50 tons. So we're going to go down. We go for a 50 ton sensor. There we go. This is going to be Iron Hand Electronic Systems. Ah, uh, yes. Nice name. We'll instant that. We'll also get ourselves, not it's going to be as important, an EM sensor. Um, these are useful more for, like, detecting populations. Oh, crap. I hit prototype by mistake. Um, I can hit prototypes to show it. EM sensor. I'm going to just obsolete it immediately. And instant it there. Done. And then... Done. Now, EM sensors are good at detecting, um, like, electronic emissions given off by, say, like, populations having radio waves and blaring pop music or whatever. Anyway, but also they're good at detecting shields on ships. So we'll know if a shield uh, is on a ship because it will give off, like, EM. Thermals can tell you about drive signatures and also about populations. And also ground forces. So we are pretty good on this. I don't think there's anything else we want to add. It can jump. Yeah, looking at that, we'd have we'd have just been shy if we'd gone for the smaller jump drive size. Um, okay. We might want to put senior CO because this is going to be one of these ships that's gonna be very important to us. It's gonna be contacting an alien species. Kinda of think that's you know, something we don't want to screw up by putting someone inexperienced on. So I feel that that should be, like, important. Mm, put the commander priority at, like, an 8. Yeah. We should probably check I've done the command priority for every ship. Hmm. Either way. Commercial vessels, so the deployment time doesn't matter. Maintenance doesn't matter. Fuel, enough to get it, like, very, very far. Just in case, we'll add that to 300 billion kilometers. Like, that's overkill. But it does mean that it should be good for the rest of the game, or at least a very long time. And we are going to say you are good. Okay, we're going to lock the class. And then we're going to have a shipyard build it. So...
retool. For the compact kitty. And you'll be done next year. Great. In which case, the only thing to worry about is really deploying those uh, sonar nets that I was talking about. Hmm. We start on that. Let's have a look. Where would we want to place them? Probably place them with this, like a 16,000 ton shipyard. We could use the 7,000 ton shipyard. Yeah. Actually, let's start on that then. Okay. So, here's how this is going to work. We are going to dump missiles that are 100% just a sensor. Oh, well, they also have a reactor to power the sensor, but that's the point. All they're going to be a sensor. They are then going to be dumped regularly by a ship who's reloading the magazine. Effectively, this is a trick that I developed. I assume everyone knows it as well, but I kind of just were like, hey, what if I do this? You tell it to open fire, and then it only has one missile to fire with, so it fires one. And then you make it sure it has such a long reload time that it's going to reload in terms of many hours, if not maybe days, before it dumps another missile. And it keeps doing that. And so what you get when you give it an order to travel is you get a dunk, 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 dunk. And then you have a line, which is a sonar net, effectively. Like, I modeled it after the uh, the SOSUS warning nets in the Atlantic uh, to protect against um, Soviet submarines. They had these just strings of, like, sonar buoys. I want to call them sonar boys. And then I'm like, but they're just kids in the ocean who then drown. That'd be awkward. Um, so, yeah. We can do that, and I think that's going to be quite effective. We'll just need to run it around the system a few times, which will make it look even more jam-packed with missiles. But yeah, why not? I'm down for this. Um, maybe temporarily have to turn off missiles if we do that. Let's pull open a missile design, and we're going to want to say this is going to be no engine, zero warhead strength, zero fuel, Active resolution. I'm okay with going for the 100. Let's go like a 5 on the active sensor. What if we go for like a 10 on the active sensor? Doesn't raise it as much as we'd want, really. Okay. What if we go for a 4? Okay, here we go. With an MSP of 4, we get an MSP of 2 there. We get a 6 size missile launcher. And, you know, six size missiles is kind of the smallest you want to go for an anti-ship missile. In terms of a buoy, it doesn't really matter that much. It does mean it's less likely to get shot because it means it's going to be hard to pick up on radar. But it gives us a 10 million kilometer, effectively, zone of sight. At least against something that's 5,000 tons. Now, we could, like, say, go, hey, what if we want to just target this at 10,000 tons? The gain isn't large enough, really, for me to think that's worth it. So, I'm going to go with 10,000. Now, there's also another possibility, which is we fired two different types of missile. This is where you can get, like, cocky. You can be like, right, if we fire two different types of missile, we can have one that's set to pick up really large ships and one that's set to pick up really small ships. I don't necessarily think we want to do that, but we could also maybe do that with, like, thermal sensors and be like, hey, what if we put a thermal sensor in? Um, yeah, the thermal sensor obviously has a little bit more... What's the word? Stealth. Because a thermal sensor is passive. It picks up heat. It doesn't emit anything. Whereas the active sensor is actively pinging people. And then you're getting the rebound. You know, you've seen submarine films where it goes... Bring, bring. That ping is active sonar. Like, they're pinging. And then the bounce back is what they're looking for. If you're not doing that, you're listening for, like, ambient sounds. Like someone singing on a ship. Or someone dropping a wrench. Or the sound of a propeller blade. Just going... Chuk, 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 chuk. Active sensor is, they will know the buoy is there. If they go past it, they get pinged, they will know it. But ultimately, because we don't really mind about these buoys getting potentially shot down, the AI won't do it. Um, we don't care. They might fire an anti-missile missile at it. That's what they do. So they'll consider it a missile. But otherwise, they're unlikely to get close enough to actually take a direct shot. So I'm okay with this. It would also tell us if they fired an anti-missile missile that they had them which is also good data. So this is actually a pretty decent setup. At least I consider it to be so. So we'll go for the 6 MSP. We'll go for the 10K. Now, our sensor range isn't huge. It's worth looking if we've got a new one on the horizon. Um, fire control speed rating. 
So no, we don't really have a new one on the horizon. Actually, no, we did up our sensor range. Great, we're up to 16 then. Yeah, that's reasonable. 21's a little bit far off, so... Yeah. Ooh, we could retrofit our diplomacy ship with electronic intelligence and analysis module. We could totally do that. And then while we're diplomacying with them, we could be analyzing that data. I really want to do that. We could totally retrofit it later on. In fact, let's actually uh, queue you up. That just seems fun. Okay, uh, back to missile times. Right, missile. We are going to call you... Um, we need a name. We're going for like swords and, you know, the sheath was the mine that releases the sword missile. We need a name for it. Like a, a weapon name, but it's it's a sensor. What do we call it? Um, like a net? Just call it the net buoy. You know what? The name of the the name of the policy is the Sol Surveillance Program. We're gonna call it SSP. Boy. Um, and then instead of an ASM, it is a mine, but it's not a mine. It's just a boy, so boy is fine. And then uh, boy, and then six because six is its size. And then its range, which for boy is more about sensor range. I guess we call it S10 M for 10 million at um, resolution 5k. Okay. Now we need to produce those. Ordnance. Um, the Void Singer. Hmm. We don't need to produce huge amounts, but just in case. We're going to go down to like 65 on that. And then we're going to go to the buoy and we're going to say, hey, um, what if we wanted like 100 of these? Give me 35%. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So now with that done, just double checking. We don't have any tech that's going to be getting in the way of this. Um, a new missile tech. Yeah, but it's only... Warhead, so it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, we're good. Let's actually whip out a new weapon. Because this is the entire thing the ship's going to be built around. It's going to be a missile launcher. And what we're looking for here is the reload rate. So, missile launcher size. We're going to crank this all the way down to a 6. We've got missile launcher reload rate 3, which actually speeds us up quite a bit. Like, if we go down to 1, you'll notice that the fire rate is 75 seconds, then 40, then 25. We don't want to be firing every 25 seconds. For instance, if our ship's going 1,000 kilometers per second in, uh, I believe, what, 100 seconds we'd be out of range? No, it's 10 million. And we're going 1,000. So, 10,000. 10,000 seconds we'd be out of range. Is that right? Mass is hard. Look. 10,000. 100,000. 100,000. 100,000. 100,000. No, oh, 10,000. Yeah, 10,000. That's right. 10,000. 10,000 seconds would be out of range. We don't want this firing every 25 seconds. We want it firing every 10,000 seconds. So every 10,000 seconds, we can't do. We can do a quarter of that. Now, there's no way to really slow this down further unless we do this. We deliberately crank down our reload rate. Which actually makes it cheaper to build. Now, normally you would never touch the reload rate. You'd be like, okay, I'm happy with fast reload. That's what we want. We don't want this. We actually want somewhere around this. Um, 10,000 mean you'd only just get the edges touching. This means there's overlap. And this means that a smaller ship will probably get caught in the overlap. This is actually really, really good. I really think this is probably about as bang on as we get. Obviously, we can't actually make this any smaller... So, yeah, let's do this. You are going to be a 
I don't know what we call you. Like, technically, what are you made by? Scythian Ordnance. Okay. Um, we're going to call you a size 6 ML um, Slow Fire. Slow Fire, and then I'm going to name the fire rate. Now, this is designed for 1,000 kilometers per second ship. Bear in mind, I've already got fixed in my head how fast this thing fires and how fast it has to move. That could change. So I'm going to whip this over to here and we're going to go and get ourselves a new ship. Now, this ship needs a magazine to put missiles in, to put into the reload, obviously. It needs an engine. That's kind of it. It will be military because it has a missile launcher, though. So bear that in mind. So we're going to go uh, new ship. The MT. Uh, technically, it will be a mine layer. Just going to have a check if there's like something better, like a sensor. Plier or something. Since the platform, since the route post. Surveillance frigate? Not really. It's more just a mine layer, but a very specific type. Now we're calling it a mine layer. It'll be the MT. ML then, which is a bit weird. Uh, right, it's going to end up being a military vessel, so we're going to give it a deployment time of... Ooh, it actually goes pretty slow, so we're going to go two years on this, just in case. Right. What do we want? Well, we know we want the missile launcher. That's fine. What do we want in terms of, say, the magazine size? Well, that's going to get hard. Uh, so, designer tech. We're going to pull open the magazine. Now, our magazine technology is actually pretty bad. Our feed system, 75%, means that 75% of the magazine is actually magazine. 25% is the feed. Neutralization system. There's a 70% chance if the magazine is hit, it will dump all the missiles to space before they explode. Great. I actually don't care about that, but also that's, you know, another tech. The armor is how hard it is to explode the magazine, the size, and then you can put extra hits to kill. Effectively, like, there's partitions and thicker walls and stuff. Uh, the extra hits to kill mean it takes longer to kill that component, which could also make it explode. So generally a good thing. In this case, again, we don't care. We want the extra space inside the magazine. Like, if I make the magazine big, you'll notice that we can be, oh, okay, extra hit to kill. Well, that causes the magazine to have less capacity. Again, worth it for us because we don't care about it. Uh, capacity. Let's go for... What's that? 30 missiles? It's not that big. It's only 600 tons. I wonder if this thing would actually fit in a FAC format. Might do. It'll be a slow FAC, but again, we don't really care about that. 600 tons. Hmm. Building at a FAC place would be kind of beneficial. This fire's 30. Yeah. That said, I am kind of tempted to go higher on that. Like, if we go for it fires 50, the magazine is 1,000 tons, though. We could go it fires, what would that be, 25? Right. If we go for this, the missile launcher will be 90. This will be 60. Two thirds of the ship is already taken up by the arm system. We get rid of the bridge, which is 100 tons. We can get rid of quite a lot of the. F I want to try to make this work. This is too interesting to give up with. So we're going to call this the Dragon Man Gallum Ordnance Capacity 180 Magazine Explosion Chance. You know what? That's fine. I'm not going to care about changing that. We're instant this. Um, the military engine will be a military engine because it's going to be small, so. Uh, refresh tech. Get rid of the bridge. Get rid of the large storage. Get rid of the engineering space. We're going to have to work on that. Um, right. Magazine. Now, that magazine should be able to have...
30. Yes, perfect. We can get an extra one in the pipe as well. So, we need an engine. Uh, we don't care about jump engines. We need a plane engine. Good old-fashioned engine. What do we have currently? Well, we've got this tiny 50-ton one. Well, we want to go 1,000, so that's not really going to cut it unless we, like, literally stick, like, four of them on. Which we can do. It's not. It's often a good idea for redundancy on a military vessel. Again, this ship, although it's military, it's not frontline military, so we don't really want it shot. And if it is shot, it can't defend itself, so it's going to die. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Um, so we're going to go over here. We're going to crack out a new engine. And we're going to ramp down the power. Now, if this is a thousand tons and we know we want to go a thousand meters per second, which kilometers per second, which again, we can go higher. We just need to refactor um, a little bit higher. Wouldn't be a problem. Let's run our calc. So we know speed, the tonnage, we need the EP. Let's do this. Speed times the tonnage. Well, this is a thousand times a thousand divided by 50,000. All right, that's going to be 200, right? Oh, 20. 20? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, just so I don't, you know, have this wrong, I'm gonna double check because you know, recording late at night. Running, yeah, that makes sense. Actually, I could have known that we put four of these drives on it, and we're like, okay, so we know we want a twenty EP drive. Well, the downside here is that you'll notice that this drive, looking way too big for what we want. Like that's two hundred. Yeah. Mm. What if we went a little bit more ham on terms of the engine power? We could up the engine power a bit. Okay, we're going to try it at this size. 220 tons. We could go a little bit higher. We could do it like 230 tons. Yeah, we'll instant this with a uh, company name of Ram Time Time Strain. We'll see if we can get it to work. Crash tech. We need fuel still. We don't have any fuel. We're going to go for a normal size fuel. That gives a huge range. In fact, that is far, far more than we need. Let's have a quick check around the Sol system. Yeah, we're talking like, what, 6 billion kilometers? We've got way more than we need with that fuel storage. The more drinking draining fuel was probably the way to go like we could have put an engine on that would suck so much fuel and we wouldn't care uh we're gonna put down a small fuel storage that's more than plenty in fact we could go smaller you know what this engine is not good enough ram time on a strain sorry we're gonna go for the more you know drank all the fuel nom, 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 nom. that's how i describe engines uh, but we're going to just quickly obsolete component. And we'll go design new component. Engine, 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 engine. And we could go double speed, which just means we need to double the speed of the missile launcher, which is fine. Like we know we can do that. So let's go down and actually let's go to 50%. Well, it's a military engine actually because it's going to be so small. So it, again... It doesn't need to be at 50%. We can put this any speed we want. Uh, let's go with the engine size and see what we can get in the 40 range. You know what? That's only a little bit heavier than the previous engine. Let's up this. It's going to need a good chunk more fuel. However, if it goes twice as fast, that saves us time on deploying these nets. Not that we really care about time. But it will help with the deployment. Okay, this is going to be smaller. We'll drink far more fuel. And I think we need to edge this over in terms of space. So let's go for 200. Um, probably need to go for 50. Yeah, so 225. We're going to try this out. So we're going to instant this. Um, the company's around him on strain. Fresh tech. Uh, 
I got rid of the fuel, so we'll put the fuel back in. 22.2 billion. Not quite as much as I want, but enough that I'm not too worried. Maintenance life, we need to fix that. So let's go up and we'll add an engineering space. We're going to go for a small one. Again, it's a fac. This is way more than we need. Let's go for a tiny one. 1.15 years. Okay. Let's actually go for a small one. All right, so let's go for a tiny one and give it like a little bit of a main a maintenance storage. Maintenance storage. Yeah. There we go. 2.64 years. Plot the deployment time. We'll go to 30. And then I guess with the spare space, we'll add just a little bit more fuel. I forgot the missile launcher, haven't I? Damn it. This is not going to become a reliable fact because it doesn't have a missile launcher. Let's go to the slower engine. There is no upside to using this engine ready. We don't need the speed. All it means is it deploys the mines faster. And honestly, we're taking long enough to build the mines that this won't matter. So we're going to obsolete the component. We're going to drag you down in power again. Okay. That has room for the missile launcher. We also need a fire control, but it only needs to be a tiny one. Which, obviously, we already have because we've been doing the missile launchers already. Let's go find the fire control. We'll be under M for missile fire control. This ship is going to go just faster than a thousand. Great. Done. Let us go all the way over here to the missile launcher we made earlier and instant this. I don't think it worked. Possibly because I had multiple different boxes open. Let's check if it's gone into research. It has not. It appears just not to have been instanced. Did I hit prototype by mistake? Okay. Well, the settings are all there. So all I need to do is rename it. Um, so size 6, uh, missile launcher, slow fire, 7, 3, 5, 0, instant. Speed is good. Okay. Now, I'm going to do a double check because I don't want to have accidentally caused this to be not in sync with the speed we're going. So, even though I know that I'm pretty good on this, I have made cock-ups before. Uh, so, 10 million. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Uh, double check the distance on the warhead as well. Yes, 10 million kilometers. Right. And we are traveling at kilometers per second. Cool. Okay. So divide by um, speed equals distance over time. Yeah. Easy enough. 7, 3, 5, 0. Yes. So to get to the edge, that would need to be our speed. We are not going that fast. We are going this fast, which means that there will be an overlap, which... Again, it was fine. We could up the speed of our engine just a tad or something. But ultimately, am I tempted by this? I mean, the downside is it will take far more mines to cover the areas, etc. And we do only have 30 in a magazine. We could put two facts together in a fleet and we could have them alternate who's opening fire. Yeah, that's a really good idea. I like this. Okay. Done. Uh, we'll add one last buoy. Get up to 31 because one goes in the launcher. Class design. Lock of the design. It is out for plenty of time. Now, normally you'd put like the conscript flag on here. And uh, you want to put the conscript flag on basically anything that you don't really care about. Anything that doesn't need like a really good commander. So uh, things that you don't care about how fast they fire. Like, hey, there's enemies. Quick, we need to fire. That's a good commander. If it's, you know, a frigate, uh, not frigate, a freighter, or if it's a terraforming base, maybe. I mean, the terraforming bonus actually helps. Okay, so maybe not that one. But like freighters, um, stuff like that. And in the case here, this mine layer, we don't really care about the reaction time. We could hit conscript. However, RP wise, I feel that conscription is a decision that will have to be made politically by, you know, the interactivity events that we've got going on with the government. Conscription isn't something that I feel I can just toggle on. So we're going to call this good. Uh, it does have eight tons left, which we can't really use. So we can't speed it up with eight tons. So let us go over to 
Shipyard. And technically, we've got some that haven't had uh, ships assigned. And they have no activity. Uh, we should definitely start up specking them. So let us go to continual capacity expansion. Your target is to be 10,000. Uh, yes, I think that's fair. 10,000 for each of you. Now, the fish tea is kind of like, yeah, we don't really want to go much further. So we will, I believe, retool for the MT. Again, that will take one month. So a lot of stuff happening in a month. Perfect. After that's retooled, we'll start building. We'll probably want to build, I'm going to say, maybe five of them. That way they can just, you know, we can have them, hey, move from here to here. And that way five of them could drop 150 buoys. This screen is going to be covered in missiles, but whatever. It will do the job. Uh, right. We're going to need to up the number of buoys that we are building massively. So I'm going to say we go to 300. And we're actually going to change the percentage so it's done a little bit faster. There we go. Think that's fair? Actually going to be done kind of the same time. Uh, right. I believe that is us working towards the Mining Fleet Act. We're starting to research orbital miners. That's us working towards the Sol Surveillance Program. We're going to deploy uh, orbital weapon platforms at two of the other three jump points, we need to wait for the last one. We are working on deploying a Solar Boy deploying ship. We are switching over our automated mines, sorry, our mines to automated mines. And we are also are currently working on producing a diplomatic vessel to go and do diplomacy stuff. Compact Kitty should be ready uh, for retooling in March, and then we'll deploy it. Yeah. So. Although, admittedly, time hasn't really gone very far this episode, we have done a lot. We've prepped a lot, and that's four big policy events that we're now working on. And I think they're all pretty good. Now, the other things that we're going to want to consider doing ourselves without having the policies, like, kind of kick in that we were kind of already working on is really starting to work on our extra solar colonies because while the moons of Jupiter are great they just aren't perfect that colony cost isn't two is what I'm saying the colony cost of two means you don't need as much infrastructure to have people live on it uh, whereas if we go to these they're 6.3 or if we go down even as far as uh, Titan almost a seven now we do have a few million people living there and that's great they're working as incubators they are producing people they are going to multiply, etc., etc., etc. That's fantastic. But we really need to start kicking this into high gear. And one of the things we can do to try and just increase our population growth is to dump people in other places. For instance, oh, you've got a mining survey potential. Uh, we could put people on Luna, Mars, um, potentially even the moons. And just putting a few people on, say, some of these places, ooh, even these comets. Uh, will allow them to start, obviously, breeding, as people do. And they will then require, hey, can we get trade goods? And we won't have to send them infrastructure. They'll merely ask the civilian economy for infrastructure, and they'll slowly build their own. And when they build their own, and they're breeding, eventually they will grow into more people, as people tend to do. And at that point, we can then say, hey, okay, we now have enough people here. We can use them to provide for the colonies, rather than having to try and take them from Earth and causing even more worker shortages. So what I'm thinking is we may want to set up Luna, Mars, potentially little colonies on Phobos and uh, Deimos just to try and push our population growth because that is kind of a problem. So I'm going to just create a colony on those two for now. And we'll want to ship over like kind of like a minimum infrastructure and then one load of people and then say, hey, that's it. That's all you get. We could also do the uh, moons. I'm just trying to think. Is there a better target for this? You know what? All asteroids. 
I want to see if there's a, a nice blue asteroid. Yeah, loads. Now, of course, they don't have minerals, but again, I don't really care about that. I'm just looking to put some people down and then have them breed up. Hello, more sink minerals and all. Um, also put all comets. I'm actually going to hide the asteroids. I want to see if we can live on a comet. There were a few. Or am I just imagining that? Okay. Well, there were a few comets that we could live on. Honestly, it's probably not worth it because you can only get like 50,000 people onto one of these asteroids, even if we did bother setting them up. It's not worth the clicking. And our colony ships can at minimum carry 100,000. So that might be a bit awkward. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll try and send people over to Luna and Mars. Now, the question is, do we have any freighters free? And the answer, I think, is going to be no. They're all cycling moves. Yeah. Is it time to build more Jagnavs? Maybe. But we do have a new engine tech. So we're probably going to build a new freighter with a new engine tech. That's slowly going to surpass the Jagnath. Or we could just retool the Jagnaths. Which honestly might be one of the simpler options. That'll have to be next time. So next time we're going to revisit some of our existing ships. And maybe do some tweaks. Hopefully... We'll also have a nice population growing in Subject Delta. We're already up to uh, 3.68 million with a support of like 8.12. Like we're supporting far more than we actually currently have there. So taking like one of the Jagnus out of rotation probably is going to be fine for a bit. Abonnent Relysium. If you want to get involved in all the uh, the forest there and goings on, please head over to the Discord. Link down below. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe. Also, the Discord has uh, links to all the videos when they come out in the announcement channel and also my streams. And it's better than the YouTube sub feed. But if you do want to use the YouTube sub feed, subscribe, bell icon, and liking and commenting below is helpful. Till next time, stay shiny.